Totally amazing, isn't it? You know, we see all of these things and now they're right in front of our faces, aren't they? This is just a quick summary of the understanding of a mega tsunami. I thought we could squeeze this in here tonight, but I wanted to give you something to understand. It's, it's really right in front of our faces now. This is from Santa Cruz. And I told people in the previous video that tsunami warnings was out in Santa Cruz, the whole west coast actually, of California, Oregon, Washington. I'm sure Canada has theirs as well. But it's amazing when you see all these things and what's happening and they're right in front of us. And then people just refuse to wake up and understand that our planet is going through some changes. It's going through what I call the adjustment. And now we are going to have to go through the adjustment, aren't we? I believe so. This is Santa Cruz. Look at the water. I mean... When you see something like this, this is nothing. I'm just going to be flat out with you. This, this is nothing. You wait until a major tsunami hits. And it could happen with a impact of a rock. Coming in at 40, 50, 60,000 miles per hour. But let's focus on this just for a brief moment. It actually, the this, this sound was so loud and so powerful that it was heard all the way to Fuji. And then the cloud formation was blown away. It just blew backwards in a circumference. But this is, this is something else. And this is really a small volcano wait until we start seeing medium-sized volcanoes going off and the ones that they have in Japan and the Philippines they are not medium-sized uh-uh no they're not so in this video we're just gonna cover briefly the understanding of a mega tsunami and what the effects could be because I believe we're going to witness it in our lifetime. I mean, it's coming. So let's start this video and I will make a brief comment at the end. And I'm going to give you a simulation. This is something I put together about mega tsunamis. I've been working on it most of the day. And this is what it could look like, ladies and gentlemen. Now, it depends on how much slides into the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Uh, it could be hundreds of metric tons or even hundreds of thousands, if not millions of metric tons falling into the Atlantic Ocean. And what might be expected? You tell me. Because Greenland... Iceland, Canada, these maps are going to show what a run-up can do. What that is, the height of a tsunami in feet or meters, okay? And one meter is three feet. So if it's 100 meters, you're talking 300 feet. And Africa could get 300 feet, but, but also in Scotland, Ireland, they could get approximately 160 feet. 
So what I'm trying to give all of you is a scenario and you can take it for what it wor what it's worth. Okay, you're talking a wave that can come in approximately 200 miles an hour. Okay, and by the time it reaches America, which is 3,500 miles, that wave, once it drops from 15,000 feet into 500 feet, 60 feet, you're talking a wave that could climb as much as 2,000 feet. 2,000 feet or more and a mile is 5,300 feet so I'm going to take you to Google Earth and we're going to look at it and then we're going to look at a couple videos towards the end but it could be a hundred times worse than Japan so we're going to go to Google Earth and I'm going to show you the area that we're going to cover dealing with the Palmer and a potential tsunami so here we are and I'm gonna bring this directly north and then I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna rotate it for you now if I measure from here to the equator they are equal and I'm not going to do a simulation where it goes to the northwest, southwest. I'm just going to give you the simulation for going directly west. And you won't believe where it's going. That's right. Charleston, Myrtle Beach, isn't that a coincidence, I don't think so, so I'm going to bring this back up and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you the amount of water and what we're looking for, so here in this area, right along in here, that's 16,000 feet of water. This area here, that's 11,000 feet. This is a ridge, the Atlantic Ridge, and that area is right out 11,000 feet, 18,000 feet. 16, 17,000 feet. Now, I have studied tsunamis, and the reason I did that is for potential impacts on the ocean dealing with the rocks. So, this is different. This is 10,000, but it's still similar. So, if a wave is coming in through 15,000 feet of water, traveling approximately 100 to 200 miles per hour when it reaches this area right here which is 7,000 feet of water and then it reaches this area of 1,300 feet four hundred feet that tsunami has a capability of rising the run up approximately I'm not gonna you know I'm not giving you pieces of candy here I'm giving you I'm giving you the truth if that waves coming in at a thousand to fifteen hundred feet it will double right here in this area because of the drop-off okay you're looking at a wave by the time it hits this area at only 300 feet 90 feet you're looking at a wave that's possible to go as, as much as 3,000 feet because the volume and the momentum is what is what they're talking about 
so if you look at this and then if you look at the mileage okay that right there is 3600 miles 3600 miles right there so it is a possibility that we could witness an event like this. A wave traveling at 200 miles an hour at 3,600 3, miles traveling through water that is 15 to 18, 16, 17,000 feet and then ending up in this area right there. 500 feet, 192 feet, 67 feet, 15 feet. So a wave like that, I'm just going to give it to you and you can do whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to hold this direction and we're just looking towards the west just the west and it's going to show up all through this area okay including this area of France and Spain all the way down so remember I'm giving you the direction towards the west the north the south going to bring this back up so people can see the globe completely Nelson Scotia Ireland Scotland Greenland Iceland all of this area right here and it could go to Central America Brazil as well as your way and even the southern part of Brazil. So I'm going to bring this in so you can see what I'm talking about. That water would go all the way in to this region of the mountains. And I'm going to give it to you the best I can. This area right here, that's 700 feet. These are my reference lines dealing for a tsunami coming from the rocks, okay? So, a wave like that would probably more than likely travel inward into this area right here. This right here is 170 That right there is 300. This is along the mountains. 300. 500. Okay. 340. Right there. You're looking at. Let's change this up a little bit. That right there is right at 300 feet. 800 feet. The reason I'm doing this is to show everyone the capability of how far this water can go in the, in the. of course it depends on how much it's coming in. you're only looking at right here in this area you're only looking at 52 feet ladies and gentlemen. that that right there is 500 so you're looking at basically this area that could get flooded
and then if you get into Canada it gets worse because that right there is only right there about 300 feet 300 about 290 so these are the areas Nelson Scotia would be completely underwater that's only 500 feet it, it may it may completely cover it because you're looking at 500 feet in this area of Nosa Scotia right here that's 200 feet 200 feet right there that whole that whole area would be gone if it happens it would be completely gone so now we're going to look at some simulations and you can make your own decision i'm just going to give you the evidence and you can take it for what it's worth so this deals with a coastal run up and this simulation comes from portugal but as you can see how fast and the amount of volume the whole east coast of North and South America would be affected, including Iceland and Scotland, Greenland, the UK, France. I mean, it, it will affect every region along the Atlantic, actually. And it depends on how much, you know, if, if just a, a few hundred tons, it's still going to produce a small tsunami, but thousands of metric tons or even more, and then comes the real birth pains. Now, this is La Palmer, and I want to show you in detail as much as possible. If it slides in, it, it could be millions of metric tons, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, let's pray on this. But if it's just a few hundred tons it's still going to produce a tsunami i don't care what you what you're thinking is about as far as how much we just don't know i don't know i can't tell you no one knows okay no one and if it is a small amount of hundreds of tons then that means the outer crust is separated and it won't take much for the inner crust to enter. Okay? It won't. It could be multiple tsunamis. And I'm not trying to put fear into nobody. Look at these cracks. I'm not trying to give anyone any fear. I'm just giving you the evidence and you can put it in your back pocket, take it with you, think about it or you can leave it on the table don't criticize this channel okay and call this channel you know fear of mongering or fear of porn or whatever because i i will block you this channel is getting a lot of people coming through here that don't subscribe okay and i'm done dealing with people uh being sarcastic rude and using abusive language and all of that i'm done but if you look at this illustration here, this is coming from the West. Now they're saying seven to eight hours, okay, at 3,500 miles. So it could be here once you go to bed in the evening. We just don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it could happen when you're asleep and it will affect the Gulf of Mexico. Okay? It will. It's going to affect the whole Caribbean, actually. Puerto Rico will get the worst of it, more than likely. But I'm going to show you in this video here what landmass looks like once it hits the ocean. Okay, now watch the simulation. Look at this. This is real. This could actually happen. 
Why are they not showing earthquakes on my program? My 3D earthquake program. They're blocking it. Okay, they're blocking it. But this could this could be real. It could actually happen, whether you like it or not. And then once the water goes inland, well, guess what? It's got to go back out, doesn't it? And it pulls suction, and it will pull automobiles. It will pull houses, buildings, and people, unfortunately, back into the ocean. So let's go here for a moment. We are living in times, the end times. I call it the beginning of times, actually. Because we are going to witness events that deals with the beginning of us going home. What I mean by that, these prophecies have to be fulfilled. In order for us to go home and complete our exam, the final exam, are you going to pass the final exam dealing with the end of age? And we are in it, ladies and gentlemen. We are in it. There is no doubt. It's here. And there's more to come. It's going to get worse. I can, I can see it. I don't know if some of you can see it, but I believe a lot of you that's been with me for a long time can see it. Because I warned people over a year and a half ago these things was coming. And from the beginning, I said, get out of heavy populated areas as soon as possible. Well, this is the time to get out. Do some spiritual prepping. You know where my safe location is? It's not here in New Mexico. It's with Yahshua, Jesus Christ, and the Heavenly Father. That's where it is for me. So I don't worry about these events. I'm not going to worry about these events because there's nothing I can do about these events other than prepare for them. A spiritually prepper. That's how I see it. Don't worry about tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, because we're not promised tomorrow. We're not. But what are we promised? We are promised forgiveness through Jesus Christ. I love you all. Please be safe, everyone. And you know what I'm going to say. Continue in prayer. Because soon, it's time for us to go home. God bless everyone. Much love.